These are the only three shoulder exercises you need for bulletproof shoulders and three times stronger than you need for any skill, martial art, or daily life. No gimmicks and way beyond personal training or weightlifting. I hope this is your new go-to guide. First is the arm windmill. It comes from martial arts, specifically the Wushu Wizards of the East. This builds full range mobility and shoulder power, but it takes a mindset shift, flexibility, and adaptability, principles to apply to your training, but also all of life. I did massive amounts of weight training which tighten the heck out of my shoulders, which makes this very difficult. I'll show you drills to open it up though. But we need to understand that the shoulder should not be trained one dimensionally, which is what most all traditional exercises do. Shoulder flies, dumbbell presses, even overhead press is overrated. They make you as tight as guitar strings. But body weight builds total strength. It's what's worked for me. And they actually work for Olympic lifters all the way up to people who actually compete in the Olympics. The shoulder is extremely complex, but if you just treat it like a prime mover for pushing, like in dumbbell presses, you're going to bind up that muscle so much that you end up with a catastrophic injury on the frisbee golf course. That's a true story, by the way. Shoulder pushing doesn't even help with what a lot of people want, punching power. That's generated through physics, biomechanics, and training those particular skills against solid objects. It has nothing to do with shoulders or chest. The shoulder is a ball that sits in a socket with a bunch of rubber bands attached to it, and that's designed to move almost omnidirectional. Same as your hip joint. Your leg should be able to kick head height and higher. So people go and do squats, same as dumbbell shoulder press, and bind everything up. So you're actually weaker because as soon as a person goes out of range, they snap. But here's a very simple move to completely rebuild the shoulder. Arm circles with a dowel to restrict your movement. You can do them with hands pronated. Likewise, you can do them with supinated grip. And you can do them in a whole variety of ways from standing, sitting, laying, etc. And all those options is where the art and science of coaching comes into play. But let's focus on the standing one, a dowel to restrict movement. Lock your arms. The whole idea is to work against gravity to condition everything inside your joint, all the connective tissue that's been damaged and bound up over the years. And like with all things, there's balance to this. It's an art, not just pumping iron. In fact, you become stronger with total strength where you can move your body as a unit through any range of motion with power and without fear of injury. That's why a long, skinny, lanky person can defeat a huge, gorilla-looking person. It's about totality and completeness. And then you actually start adding weight to the dowel. Very light at first. People looked at me weird in a mainstream gym when I did this kind of stuff. That's okay though, I know it's really happening. But it starts with flexibility, which is a mindset shift and requires mental flexibility as well. And these are guiding principles because I want you to be able to think your training through, not just copy some dopey online fitness instructional video series. And then come train with us because training in community transforms people at light speed, way faster than without it. And ultimately, be able to do both, to understand your training, but also not be stuck because objective Objective eyes accelerate things to warp speed. Now pushing, but not with dumbbells. That's just so 1980s. The second move is the full romp, back limber, 90 degree handstand push up. You need to be able to master your body at all angles. And the push up goes to all angles, all the way up to the full romp, handstand push up. Here's the most advanced version. You go back through a back limber, pressing up into a handstand, then controlling all the way back down to the floor, then back up to the handstand, then all the way over to the bridge, and finally standing position. That is true shoulder strength for pushing at all angles and it took me forever to learn it. I'm tall, I'm heavy, I lifted tons of weight which made me tight. I learned this when I was around 40. I would have had all that flexibility, mobility, and strength far sooner if I started when I was lighter and maintained it as I grew into an adult and also if I didn't add any weights until I developed all of these skills first. But so what? We are where we are. What helped me build this is the dowel stretch mentioned earlier along with body weight pushing which I'll call the second move. Body weight pushing like bridge push-ups and pyramid push-ups. When you understand how the shoulder joint works, you stop training it in isolation on a shoulder day split. You train holistically through body weight pushing, starting with the basics like I mentioned, bridge push-ups and pyramid push-ups. But what often happens is people get stuck not being able to straighten out their legs on the pyramid push-up or not being able to push up into the bridge. This is where objective eyes help tremendously. Then you build out the flexibility and keep moving forward and upward. The third move is this, the hang. Think about a dead hang is this. Lots of people People make videos about this and they're only partly true. There's sophistication here that you don't start seeing until you get into Cirque aerial arts, like our performers and athletes doing swings and one arm meat hooks and back flags and all this twisting and turning that the shoulder should be able to do. I mean, who's going to be able to wriggle out of a kimura or hammer lock, a one dimensional boxer or a crazy flexible strong athlete? A hang is going to condition your shoulder because the origins and insertions of the tendons and muscles are hanging on for dear life, sending signals to your brain to 
grow and recover for everything this human being is demanding from them. But if you've not been doing these, there's a huge risk of tearing your shoulder, even a basic hang. Because if you move your legs in the slightest at all, like even just a small tuck or something, it's gonna all of a sudden put torque on your shoulders that they weren't expecting. And these injuries happen in the millimeters, not to mention hanging in a German hang or a reverse flag. So again, art and science of coaching and training. But look at a training session like this on a quote unquote shoulder day. You're simultaneously doing hamstring work in the pike or wall pike push-ups. You're doing bicep training as you keep your elbows locked on the dowel stretch, including mobility all the way down to the wrists. You're doing abdominal stretching in the bridge position plus quads. You'll see what I'm talking about when they start lighting up at rep 20. You're also building back extension mobility and strength in bridge position. Plus your sternocleidomastoid is gonna light up as you touch the back of your head to the ground. And in the hanging training, it's just freaking everything. Here's an example of what I do for strength. Five rounds, 10 dial stretches with 10 pounds, one single full round push up like I showed, one single meat hook on each side, two minutes of rest in between each thing. Depending on your level, these three moves might look something like this. The dowel stretch with no weight, the pike and bridge push up up to 50 reps, high volume for initial development, almost like rehab or physical therapy because I can guarantee that hamstrings and shoulders are gonna be tight. And then the two hand hangs. How we would do it is design protocols that go up or down between advanced training and where you're currently at. Maybe it's what I mentioned earlier, 50 pike push-ups, 50 bridge push-ups, 20 dowel stretches unweighted, and hangs where you're competing against past time. The progression is in the nuance, the hard work that you put in mentally and physically, but also the nuance. One nuance is first just understanding the shoulder. The second is the goals to set. The third is the reverse engineering, how to build them from, say, the pyramid and bridge push-up into advanced levels like hollow back and handstand push-up, or progressing through hangs without tearing something and actually making solid progress. Now, people always ask, how do you get started? Well, first is subscribing, sure, but also opting in. So if Google ever crumbles like the empires of old, you can stay connected with us. Second is self-study, which has its merits, but also takes about four times as long simply because we all cheat, create imbalances, and cause self-injuries. Third is chatting with my team and getting started in the next day or two. They'll help you from beginner to advanced in anything you wanna do, okay? And if you implement the coaching and not go off track, you'll do it without injury and at a sustainable growth rate. See you in the next video.